Can I make a counterpoint to the idea of xenohormesis? This is quite interesting. So I would, I see this a little differently. I think that there are plant compounds, and I talk about this in my book, which is coming out in a few months, you guys. There, there are plant compounds that have benefit in some pathways in the human body. But what's so interesting for me is that when I look deeper into the plant compounds, if we look other places in the human body, the plant compounds are also doing negative things. It's kind of like any pharmaceutical drug. We would not be surprised if a pharmaceutical drug, whether it's ibuprofen or Aleve or a chemotherapeutic agent, maybe that's not the best idea. Uh, Aleve and ibuprofen are good examples. They do some things we like them to do and they do other things we don't like them to do. And I think plant molecules are no different. And I, I push back against the concept of xenohormesis a little bit because many of the benefits that, that are the purported benefits of plant molecules are things we can also achieve by living well. This is kind of the radical life conversation that we had, like with the sirtuins. And you know better than I if we can activate, or we may not know this from experiments, whether we can activate sirtuins to the same extent that we can with resveratrol with ketosis. But the argument that I make in the book is, hey, look, like if we look hard enough, the plant molecules have damaging effects in other places in the body. Curcumin is another good example. They do things that are good, but then they also have bad effects. So forfane is the same way. That, and I, what I worry about are these collateral side effects. Mm -hmm. If the beneficial effect is something we can get by living well in the first place, right? It's kind of a redundant effect. <clears throat> I'll illustrate it quickly with sulforaphane. My listeners have probably heard me say this a million times, but sulforaphane we know is an isothiocyanate. We talked a little bit about this earlier. There, these molecules have been shown in cell culture to actually make DNA breaks, but they also activate the NRF2 pathway in the liver, which makes more glutathione. And so in short-term studies, isothiocyanates do look like they may protect us against DNA damage because of the glutathione that's produced, perhaps. But the sulforaphane has this other negative side effect then that we're never told about, which is that it inhibits the uptake of iodine at the level of the thyroid and does other negative things in the body, kind of because it's like, it's this foreign molecule. We've never seen it. It's all these like molecular side effects to these plant molecules that I worry about. Curcumin is kind of the same way. It does have some efficacy as an anti-inflammatory, probably affecting prostaglandin pathways. I'm not sure the mechanism is completely known, but it also can affect DNA topoisomerase 2 and um, can affect the, a potassium channel called the HERD channel, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of my pushback against the, the plant molecules and xenohormesis is we just need to make sure we're seeing the, entire, the entirety of what they're doing in the human body because they often have negative side effects elsewhere.